Have you ever seen a ghost or experienced something paranormal? Yeah, yeah, in the cold, hard light of science, it's sometimes easy to think there's nothing out to get you in the darkness, but even the most hard-boiled skeptic can feel a chill in a graveyard at dusk or in an abandoned house. So what does science say about ghosts? I'm going to have a go at explaining the soul, nighttime demons, and that feeling that you might sometimes get that there's someone or something there in the room with you. People often say that ghosts are the souls of the dead that haven't fully crossed over to the afterlife, and although no one has yet produced evidence of a ghost under controlled conditions, there have been attempts to quantify the soul. In 1901, Dr. Duncan McDougall had TB sufferers placed on scales in their dying hours and seemed to pinpoint a 21 gram change in their weight at the moment of death. By repeating the experiment with dogs and showing no weight change, he attempted to prove that the mass he saw lost by his human subjects was the mass of the soul escaping the body. Psychologist Richard Wiseman has outlined the counter-arguments to McDougall's claims though. Human bodies heat rapidly at the point of death and the change could come from sweated out moisture. Plus, it's worth pointing out that dogs don't have sweat glands all over like us. That's why they pant to cool down and that would support why they didn't lose any mass at the point of death. What about experiencing ghosts firsthand though? Well, a common demon found in cultures all over the world is a monster that sits on your chest and attacks you while you sleep. In Mexico, there's even a phenomenon named for it, and if you translate it, it's a dead body climbed on top of me. Is there a scientific explanation? Yes, and it's sleep paralysis. You've probably heard of REM sleep, the rapid eye movement period of sleep where you dream. Well, it's thought that sleep paralysis exists to stop you thrashing about and reacting to all of those images. When you are suddenly jarred awake from your dreams, you can get stuck. Your body is paralysed, but your brain is conscious. The confusion of coming out of a dream state, plus that strange sensation of having no control over your body, could explain the ghostly sightings. Another ghostly feeling often quoted is the feeling that someone is in the room with you when there definitely isn't. A team of Swiss scientists were investigating this exact thing in patients suffering from neurological conditions that produced this feeling of presence. The interesting bit of the research is that the scientists actually managed to recreate those very sensations in healthy subjects, two of whom begged for the experiment to stop because they were so spooked. Using basic robotically controlled prosthetics, the volunteers had to essentially poke themselves in the back. Despite the fact that the volunteers were entirely in control of the device, as soon as a half second delay was introduced between the control and the prosthetic arm moving, most subjects reported that it felt like another human or presence was in the room. You can get your head around this if you think about how difficult it is to actually tickle yourself. That's because there's an amazingly fast connection between your brain and your body, telling you that the tickling sensation is coming from you, not another source. Your body is essentially expecting the tickle and it dampens the effect. Otherwise, you'd be sniggering every time you went to cross your legs. One school of thought even suggests that the reason why schizophrenic people sometimes sense other presences could be down to a similar disconnect between what the mind and body are expecting to feel. Oh, and interestingly, some schizophrenic people are able to actually tickle themselves. Okay, so science is doing pretty well right now. Three nil. I think you could say. But what if a ghost was reported to haunt a laboratory and the research scientists themselves swore they saw it? Yeah, that'd be pretty convincing. Well, at Coventry University in the 1990s, many staff cleaners, researchers and engineers reported feeling distressed, depressed and even terrified in the lab. The room seemed to give everyone who worked in there a generally spooked out feel. One of the lab team even reported seeing a shadowy figure in the periphery of their vision. So what was this ghost? Was it a, a long dead PhD student, a haunted test tube, a large air conditioning fan? What? Wait, what? Ah, the key to understanding this ghostly presence is that sound is a wave. When you shout or even speak, you vibrate the air around you and that travelling vibration, those waves of pressure are either close together, 
a high frequency sound or further apart, a low frequency sound. That mosquito ringtone that was used a few years ago was a high pitched whine with frequency of around 16 kilohertz, that's 16,000 vibrations per second. It was used by teenagers because young people could hear that frequency sound whereas adults couldn't because they'd undergone natural hearing loss. Well, just like there can be high frequency sounds out of our hearing range like dog whistles or ultrasound, there's also infrasound, extremely low noises, and some around 20 hertz are too low for you to hear. But these changes in air pressure around us aren't only perceived by our ears. Think about ultrasound. We can't hear it, but it can be used to break down kidney stones by vibrating them. Infrasound can also vibrate your body it's been reported to cause a smearing of vision in certain environments and unsettling feelings. In fact, there have been a fair few reports of hauntings in factories where there were really big fans generating infrasound at about 18 hertz. When the fans were turned off, reports of odd experiences vanished, including the fan at Coventry University. So there you go. That's what science has to say about those reports of ghostly goings on. We'd love to hear yours though. Do jot them down in the comments. Let us know your spooky happenings. Oh, and if you're after more bizarre body stuff, check out my film on why we laugh when we're tickled. Death, the final destination, the great equaliser, whether prince or pauper, we all end up in the same place, in the ground. We used to think the definition of death was the heart-stopping beating, but that was before we could measure brainwaves.